Hi everybody, I'm Alejandra, librarian at the Poinciana Branch Library with the Osceola Library System, and welcome to Art Time. I'm going to show you how to make this abstract painting using acrylic pouring. Just so you know, this program is also available in Spanish in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, so if you are interested, you can also watch this, watch this in Spanish. So before we get started, I'm just going to let you know what you're going to need for this art project. You're going to need a few colors of paint. If this is your first time doing acrylic pouring, I would suggest using no more than three or four colors. So I have four colors of paint here for my project. You're gonna need several cups, at least one for each color you're gonna mix. You need some water and glue as your mixing medium. You'll need some popsicle sticks or whatever stick you have just to mix your colors. You'll need a canvas or canvas board like me. And then I would also suggest having a tray or something to lay your canvas on for when you're pouring your paint onto the canvas. So we can go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is mix our colors. So for acrylic pouring, you don't want to just pour your acrylic paint directly onto your canvas. You're going to have to mix it with some mixing medium. So I'm going to start off with just a little bit of paint there. I don't have exact measurements, unfortunately, but you're gonna use about double the amount of mixing medium to acrylic paint. So I'm gonna use about double the amount of Elmer's glue to this paint. You can buy pouring paint, like from Michael's or just any craft store, and those are ready to just to pour directly onto your canvas. But you can also mix these at home if you just wanted to try this out as a hobby. You know, you don't necessarily need to buy special paint for this. And some people do mix it with just water. I prefer to mix it with a little bit of glue. It makes it just that little bit thicker and easier to pour. And then a little bit of water. I'll go ahead and just grab my stick and start mixing. Okay. And then ideally your texture should be not too thin, not too thick. So something that would be easily poured onto your canvas, but also not so thin that all your colors mix together and get muddy. So this texture actually is a little bit too runny. So I'll go ahead and add a little bit more glue. I would say about the texture of maybe Mod Podge or Decoupage glue, about that texture would be fine. It is, it's really hard to describe exactly what texture you're looking for. But once you have some practice, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. See, so that's a little bit better. As you can see, when I go like this, it kind of like strings off of my popsicle stick. So I, that's a good texture for me. So I have my four colors already mixed here. And then you're going to want to pour your colors into an empty cup. So I'll go ahead and start with, actually, let me go and start with my green. So you can pour these all at once or do maybe like layers of each color. It's up to you. It does look a little bit different if you do layers. I do prefer that look. Okay. And then this is what I'm talking about where you want your paint to lay one on top of the other. You don't want it to mix together. So let me add one more color just so you can see. See, so you can see there that the colors are not mixing together. They're laying one on top of the other. So if your paint, when you pour your paint, if it's mixing together, see if it's not sitting one on top of the other, then that could mean that your paint is a little bit too thin and you need to add more glue or more paint. So go ahead and just keep adding your colors until you fill your cup or until you just about fill your cup. And of course I'm using small cups, but if you're using a bigger canvas, you're gonna need much, much bigger cups. Okay, so now I have my pouring cup ready. Let me set aside my individual colors here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pour that directly onto the canvas. You can also like do like this and then flip it upside down. That's called the flip cup technique, but I'm just gonna pour it directly onto my canvas. Yep. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more because I am short some paint there, as you can see. So you can go ahead and add more. 
This really isn't an exact science. This is really kind of trial and error. At least for me it is. Okay, so I have a little bit more mixed here. And you can always go back if you see spots that you're not happy with and add more paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my canvas and start tilting it back and forth. And that's how we get this beautiful like dripped look. Okay, and you do wanna be pretty careful, like methodical with the way that you tip it. I love the way these colors look. Okay. I am actually going to add a little bit more. Just to some of those spots where I think it could use a little bit more color. And there may be some here too. Okay, and then give it another little shake here. Or not quite a shake, just tip it over. <laughs> and the really fun thing about this kind of painting is like, you'll never know which, what kind of painting you're gonna get. Like it'll always be a surprise. And I think that's really, really fun. Like obviously you don't go into this having a plan of how you want it to look. I would suggest that if you are gonna do this, try to stick to colors that are fairly, like in the same color family, it would go together. Okay. And I do have some spots here where it's not perfect, but I'll go back in with, with my extra paint here. And then make sure you do get paint all around the edges too. So whatever's dripped off of your canvas, you can go ahead and just paint onto your edges with your finger, with a paintbrush, whatever suits you. It just looks a little bit more polished that way if you bring it all the way to the edges. Okay. Let's see if I can give it one more tilt here to get all those blank spaces. And then sometimes you do have to get your fingers involved. That's okay. So here is my finished product. I don't want to tip it too far forward, but you do want to let this completely dry overnight, ideally. And we are all done. And this was indeed very, very messy. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining us. Just so you know, our next crafty live program is gonna be October 7th at 2 p.m. where we'll be making paper beads. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to check out osceolalibrary.org for more information about our virtual programs and our other services. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time.